said to me, you know, this is a lot of fun and it's beautiful here. We should maybe think about opening a beach bar one day. My mom always said, listen to your wife. So I said, why not? Let's do it. There's no better place to work than in actual paradise. Getting used to the Dominican lifestyle where everything's a little tranquilo, as we like to say. Extremely worth it. I think NASA has determined that the amount of time it takes between a green light happening and a Dominican to honk their horn is faster than the speed of light. I don't call them my employees. I don't call them co-workers. No, they're our family. And I think the world's best Jenga players are actually Dominican as well. Once you are part of the community, everybody is out there to help you out. You miss every shot you don't take. Hi, and welcome to the Punta Cana podcast. My name is Cheryl Henderson, and I am your guide to Punta Cana Living. Today, we have very special guests with us because they are about what this podcast is all about. Expats, changing their lives, making the move, doing business, raising their families. Even uh, we get an additional bonus about bringing a pet absolutely from outside of the country to the Dominican Republic. So we are ready to have a really great conversation with Michael and Sylvia Livingston. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank great you. to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about how you came to discover Punta Cana. Wow. Uh, the short version of the story is we actually went to Aruba on vacation. And my wife and I were at a, just a little small little beach bar there. And very casually, she said to me, you know, this is a lot of fun and it's beautiful here. We should maybe think about opening a beach bar one day. My mom always said, listen to your wife. So I said, why not? Let's do it. <laughs> And, and the rest uh, is history. Rest Thank is history, you so yeah. much for coming. <laughs> no, but so, I, I, I but, love it. Yeah, but I, I mean, I, we loved Aruba, but I found that it was really small mm -hmm. and very expensive compared to Punta Cana. Punta Cana had a much better economy. And so we were very excited. And I jumped on a plane and brought a buddy down here and looked around, found a spot to open a business. And that's how we're here. Wow. That is a classic story, but it is a true story. And it's beautiful because many of our guests have the same story, just a dream. Why don't we do this? Why don't we change our lives? Why don't we move? Why don't we open a beach bar in Absolutely. the Caribbean? Absolutely. And now you own a beach bar in the Caribbean. There's not many better offices to work out of. That's right. Exactly. Because yeah. you're literally on the beach every day. Tell us about the restaurant. I'd love to hear a little bit about the, sure. the business. The name of the restaurant is Castaways. We're in Uvero Alta in Playa Palmera. We're right on the beach, meters from the water. Uh, we specialize in fresh seafood, langostinos, langosta, fresh, pa uh, fresh uh, mahi right off the boat. And uh, our chef is really from Haiti, but he trained in Boston for many years, worked wow. on a lot of cruise ships, and he's fantastic. Yeah, I know. Um, people <laughs> love the food, and uh, it's just a beautiful location as well, so we're kind of blessed to be where we are. Yes, and, I, and I've been there. I love that restaurant, literally right on the beach. Huge, huge beach there yes. in Uvera Alto. Yes. Very, very big beach. Great food, great ambiance, amazing. Love the restaurant, Castaways. Oh, thank so, you. I, you're talking about Langostino, and we've talked about uh, sourcing locally. Give me a little bit of information about uh, yeah. how, how that is working. Yeah, absolutely. We've got uh, a few different local fishermen that we sourced, and they bring us product on basically every day almost. Uh, so it's kind of fun. Sometimes you'll see the, the fishermen bring in huge mahi, and the kids' eyes light up when they see these fish, and they, they kind of want to play with little lobsters and stuff. So, uh, you know, getting that fresh local fish in is very nice, too. It's a, it's a great product. And for tourists that are coming from, you know, part of part, somewhere in the Midwest or something like that, that aren't used to fresh seafood, it kind of blows their mind when they get to taste a piece of mahi that was just swimming yesterday. I know, exactly. It's like you're watching the boat coming and you see the mahi and, and that's dinner. That's dinner. <laughs> that's dinner. Come on over. <laughs> you can't get fresher than that. I've had a lot of feedback from people who have come and they're surprised that the, the seafood and the food is so fresh, but this is where it comes from. You're Absolutely. not going to get fresher than that. That's right. So, Sylvia, did you ever think that he would act so quickly on your, your idea and your dream? Not in my lifetime. Uh, yes, it was an idea. Yes, I was talking about when we are ready to retire. Ah. We came back from Aruba in January, and in February, he was already here looking for locations. Wow. 
Well, that's really how it's done. At the end of the day, if you think too much, you can almost talk yourself out of it. Yes, you, you miss <laughs> every shot you don't take. Exactly, exactly. And you don't want to over, overthink, just take the shot. Go with the flow. There you go. Wow, that's incredible. And so you've relocated to the Dominican Republic and now you're here full time and you have a family with you too. Tell us about your family. We are here full time now. Yo soy dominicano, Ooh, uh, as they say. Me gusta, me gusta. <laughs> Hablamos en español ahora. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, we love it here. Uh, obviously, it's beautiful. The beaches are beautiful, but uh, the people are just really friendly. They work hard. Um, the cost of living is very nice. Uh, it's affordable. It's a great place to just, as she said, retire, but we're not quite there yet. But, we're uh, not quite there We're yet. still in the working part of things. In fact, we have plans to do a whole lot more somewhere in the future here, here as well. That's beautiful. And it's great to enjoy a retirement type of environment before you're ready to retire, because then you can really enjoy it if you make that intention to do that. I know it's hard to work because I'm in the same right. shoes as right. you guys. I'm here working still kind of full time and raising a family, but there's no better place to work than in the actual paradise. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just beautiful down here. Many people will want to ask you about relocating because we wanted to talk a little bit about that. Can you tell us about your journey and the relocation from the States to Punta Cana? Sure. You want to take that one? Or? Well, it's, it's a journey mm -hmm. and it can be a tough one. You definitely have a serious decision to make. Yes. Because you are leaving something behind to gain something new. So you have to ask yourself, am I going to be happy? Come and visit. Yes, you will be happy. Yes. The weather, the breeze, the ocean, the people, the food, all of it, extremely worth it. For us, it was um, a long journey from the first visit back in 2021 in February until now, we had to split times and we are still doing that. We've got a 17 year old son who's finishing high school. Mm -hmm. So it's for us at this moment, it's time in United States and time here. Mm. It is definitely tough at the beginning but you get used to it mm -hmm. and it makes it easier over time. Yes. So your transition is kind of in camino, as they say in, in mm -hmm. Spanish, like along the way versus planning and planning and planning and planning and planning. It's like, let's just do it and we'll iron out the kinks along the way. Correct. At the beginning, we had a split decisions constantly. Mike was here most of the time and coming home for visits until it was time to make a decision, okay, what are we really doing? Are we getting a, into full-time living in DR? For him, it's a full-time. For me, it's still a split time mm -hmm. because of our son being 17 and because of him finishing high school. Mm -hmm. So that is going to be full transition is going to be after he's done with high school. Okay. And making sure that, you know, his college is situated and we can... Which means paying for college, so <laughs> come on exactly. out and visit us at Castaways. <laughs> yes, and buy lobster every day. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So yes, yes. It is, it is a journey, like I said, but it's a very enjoyable one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what would you advise to someone who is sitting in the States and imagining changing their lives? What would you say to them as the very first thing that they would need to do? You know, I actually hear a lot of people ask me that question mm -hmm. when I'm at the restaurant. And, you know, I hear people all the time say, oh, you actually acted on your dream. And they seem to be like just trying to find the courage to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think you just have to, like you said, you just have to act and you just have to do it. You can't just wait and think about it. Oh, I'll do it next year. I'll do it the next year. Do the research. If that's really what you want to do, if you love the beach and you want to be down here, do the research. Come on down. You're going to love it here. As I said before, the people are great. You're going to get to know people very well. 
Uh, the locals will help you out. They're very helpful people. Mm -hmm. I can remember when I first came down here, I actually lost my passport. Oh. And a stranger helped me. She took me literally to the police station and was just helping me out the whole time and walked me through the whole process. So the people here, again, just really friendly. That is incredible. A real life uh, encounter with right? a perfect stranger who just is just there to help you. Yeah, Not absolutely. even looking for anything in return. And that's that's what you'll find here in the Dominican Republic and in Punta Cana. People really want to help. And that yes. is that's really great. Actually changes us and who we are in the culture that we come from Absolutely. being Americans, Europeans, Americans, and always thinking about me, 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 and stepping over a, a sick person right. on the sidewalk. A, a Dominican is actually going to stop and offer you a hand and offer to help you. And that is something that's really incredible about this culture that that I really love. It is, it is. And that's one of the things that, that was kind of part of our dream too, is to, to be able to help people here um, with the restaurant and, and provide a place of not only just a job, but a well-paying job uh, that they can enjoy and enjoy life on the beach. And, you know, I've seen uh, two of my employees get their first car and their first new motorcycle. And, Excellent! You know, it's fun, it's fun things like that that make it better. Improving their lives, improving their lifestyle. Yes. And yeah. they becoming part of our family yes. because yes. of being part of castaways. That's, I don't call them my employees. I don't call them, you know, co-workers no they're our family mm -hmm. and that's a general sentiment i'm so excited to be here speaking with you because in my company it's the same right we're yeah. family yeah. we're family and people come and and we welcome them to our family because it really really is like family people taking care of people mm -hmm. and that's nice that it transcends business it, does. it it doesn't matter what business you're in whether it's a restaurant or real estate or construction or what have you the people and the culture is just what is so critical so important and what is the reason that people yeah. have a dream and they come and they make their dreams come true or they come on vacation and pack go home and sell everything and come back you know right. whether it's right. it's very quick or whether it's a, a transition that takes time and so you have chosen a transition that is taking your time because of your son but he's going to be graduating and then you will do the full-time thing or how is that going to work yeah, he'll be graduating and, and going to college in Florida. And uh, oh, congratulations! Oh uh, yeah, woo! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we won't say what school. Go on, Oles. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we heard that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, he'll be going to school in Florida, and uh, I guess at that point we've bought a home here already. Uh, we downsized our home in Atlanta, and uh, that was a process in itself to try to yeah. figure out where the furniture is going to go. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, to go from a huge five-bedroom house down to a two-bedroom there and a two-bedroom here and you know, yep. it, it, it can be a little bit expensive trying to transfer things here. Mm -hmm. um, and we found that it's probably better to buy furniture locally and leave your stuff back home unless mm -hmm. it's a sentimental piece or something like that. Mm -hmm. You're not recommending to bring furniture in your household goods uh, versus better to buy furniture here. As For far me, as it depends. Okay. Because you could... You, as, as Mike said, do the research because there are companies out there in the United States that are actually working with Dominican companies here or they have two offices. The one that helped us with moving our, uh, some of our stuff, some of our belongings here has an office in Georgia and they also have an office here in Santiago. Mm -hmm. So that was international company between US and DR mm -hmm. And I found them not to be too expensive. Actually, they were pretty reasonable. So it really depends on which company you use. Mm -hmm. if you, and it, at the same time, it definitely depends where you're coming from. Because if you're moving from West Coast into here in DR, it's yeah. going to take a little more money. Yes. Because your but Because you're further having further a away. further yes. distance to travel. Exactly. Yes. But it doing a research there is not only one company out there there are several there are yes. quite a few so and as mike said yes. sem sentimental values behind those things that you're looking to bring i don't know if there is really a dollar money that you can put on that right it's it's something that it's close to your heart and it should be with you yes 
I definitely agree with that and your advice to do the research because what I have found is the prices can be all over the board, yes. drastically different. There's no standard price for moving your goods from one country to another. So definitely call several companies and get several and various quotes and even recommendations. I would definitely recommend that to ask Absolutely. for people that they have worked with just and to make sure that yeah, d negotiate. Yeah, negotiate. Negotiate. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I'm sure that they're flexible and uh, about... Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because many times you may think that that's not negotiable and you call in the price is the price, but something like that, it's good to call around and negotiate. Yes. The okay. company that we use definitely did give us a breakdown. Oh, that's so, good. That's good. So that's But if you a, a don't ask, tip. you don't get it. Exactly. If you pay the original price or the list price... They'll take it. Absolutely. So. I think I found that the smaller things that you can fit in a suitcase, you can actually get here a lot cheaper just buying an extra suitcase on the airlines. The, you know, when you're cleaning out the medicine cabinet and the towel closet and the, the picture frames, throw those in the suitcase. Don't put that exactly. on the ship. Yeah. Exactly. Especially when you're traveling back traveling and forth. Already, yes. Yeah. Anyway, and you have your mm -hmm. home, you're not bringing everything. You can bring things when you travel like small appliances or some household goods and those types of things that Absolutely. you may want to bring yes. with you. Yes. Okay. You have dreamed of the perfect Caribbean beach lifestyle. With Boardwalk Developments, we have the blueprint for you in this tropical paradise. Celebrate incredible returns when you elevate your investment portfolio with the hottest real estate in Punta Cana. Invest wisely. Live lavishly. We'll show you how. Contact Boardwalk Developments, Punta Cana. So you've not only brought over household goods to the DR from the States, and you've also brought your pets over to the DR, you have a dog and two also cats. two cats. So a dog and two cats. I'm sure you didn't put them on a ship to come to the DR. No, we were thinking about that. No, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Just put them in the suitcase or put them in the cabinet drawer, you know, fill those drawers. So how did that process go? In, and what would you recommend about uh, doing that from your learnings? Again, research. Yes. There is many companies out there uh, that do provide the service. Each company will have a different style of bringing a pet over. For us, our pets, and for many, many of people out there in the United States and the world, they're part of their family. Absolutely. And that's, Absolutely. Why, that's why we made sure that they come with us. We wanted to have a safe travel for our pets. So we made sure that they were in a cabin with us. The kitties nicely fit under our seats, which was very easy. With a dog, we had a gentleman that actually flew into Atlanta from Buffalo or New York area, met us and Storm. Storm is our dog's name. Nice. Uh, the day before the travel, got on the same flight with us, set separately. He has a special license that allows to bring rather large dogs without any problems onto a plane and bring them to a different country. So this is an individual who is licensed to yes, transport or travel with, or how is that? But where, where was the dog actually? Be below with, or? With the gentleman. Like First sitting class. Next to him. Not <laughs> us, but he was. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. That's why I want to clarify. So he's like, this is my companion. Two seats. The dog is going to be right next to me on the plane. Correct. He wow. was, he was, and he was fully responsible for the dog the entire trip from beginning to end, including uh, going through that agriculture customs yes. where you have to talk to somebody and make sure that all your documents are in order yes. when you're bringing your pet in. Dominican Republic has specific requirements when you're bringing an mm -hmm. animal here 
all of that needs to be done pre departure. Right. All what the- are some of the first of all, how big is your dog? She's about 45 pounds. Okay, so 45 pounds. So she's, pound she's not a tiny. She doesn't right. fit under the seat. Right, mm-hmm. because if the dog was small enough, it would be under the seat. It would like be the right. cat's. Yes, right. and, and there would be no, no problem. But when right. you have a larger dog. Like 45 it, pounds. It yeah. requires additional steps. Um, right. Okay. So as far as the health certificates and all that, it needs to be done by the vet, accredited vet in okay. United States. Not every vet is accredited to give a certificate, health certificate. Okay. For us, and is there I don't a list uh, in the Dominican Republic of accredited vets, or they just have to have a certification? Um, your vet will know if they are accredited okay. or not. Okay. Um, so ask your vet. You need to ask, ask your vet. Ask your vet if they are accredited to give a health certificate for the pet for Correct. travel. Mm-hmm. Correct. Okay. Um, Very good. Dominican Republic has a website, and I would not be able to even remember right now what that website is, but it does give you a list of what their requirements are. Okay. here for you to bring a pet in okay. when we were bringing our animals here uh, and it didn't matter if it was a a cat or a dog it needed all the same requirements the they had to have rabies vaccination and that rabies vaccination had to be minimum a month or longer old okay it needed so don't get the shot the day before right the before trouble. no it has to have a minimum of 30 one plus days of that vaccination in their system chipped the animals had to be chipped Mm -hmm. um and they had to be what chipped a track microchip oh really microchip is a requirement or at least it was then i i'm not sure if things have changed but microchipping was which is a good idea to have anyway to track your to animal. track your animal to just in case if it gets lost yes. that's how oh. you locate you know some vets have a special instrument that they can scan an animal and find an owner so interesting um, you learn something new every day and by the way we will get that link and put it uh, attach it to the the description so for oh, anybody yeah, who is wondering yeah we'll go ahead and, and get that information so that we can share that information. Yes, and the health certificate needs to be issued within 10 days before travel. Okay. So that's pretty much it. That part of the process, not a, nothing, it, it's not a, you know, science project. You just have to make the step time by step. and get it done. Yeah, you, you have to know that you need to do some research and follow some steps and some requirements Correct. and it cannot be last minute. Correct. Plan in advance. Yes. Plan in advance if you want to bring your pet to the DR, which is, you know, should be done anyway, but it's not like before where maybe you could just go up and do things very last minute. It's it's a process. It's not a last minute thing. No, no. 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 Okay, that's that's good to know. That's good to know. So that was that was it. And she traveled on the same plane with us. For for me, for, for Michael, it was the most important part of the process, her safety. Yes. yes. And being in a, some people have done previously a cargo underneath the plane. Right. However, things have changed. That's, it's not allowed for Dominican Republic because of the temperatures yes. on arrival. Yeah, I know that there have been different laws, um, not laws, but rules and regulations about when you could travel with pets. Even in the wintertime, depending on where you're coming from, if it's too cold Correct. below the plane where you're coming from, it's not the right time. And I've understood that even some uh, vets have been requested to even give the a range of temperatures that a pet could, yes. could withstand and travel under because it could be too cold. Or it could be too hot. Yes. Well, FAA has its own regulation. Mm -hmm. But then on top of that, besides the FAA regulations, every airline has their own set of regulations on top of that. So depending on which airline you're planning to take coming here, make sure that you check their pet policy. That's very important. That is very important because you do not want to only take care of the FAA and then go to the airport and, and some airline says, 
well, we yeah. have a different rule. So check not only with the FAA, but also check with the particular airline. So you'll need Correct. to know what airline you're going to fly on, too. Yes, yes. Yeah. And now, aren't there some rules about where you can fly into and out of? I don't know how long it's been since you have had your pet here, but there, I, I've been understanding that there are some different... Uh, requirements on even where you can travel into and out of because of the CDC? There are still certain airlines have uh, embargo mm -hmm. on, I mean, on pets. However, some of the services that are uh, being provided to transport pets here, if they don't have a hub in where you are coming from, your pet may travel from a different location that you're traveling with. Wow. Yeah. So, so at the end again, of the day, research, check research, research. everything, check everything, ask everybody questions, ask the airline, check with the FAA, check with your vet, check with, with everybody check to with make everybody. sure that yes. you don't have a surprise at the last minute yes. and, you know, storm gets Stormed Stop. out from somewhere else. <laughs> That's know. right. Storm gets caught in a storm. <laughs> we don't want that. 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 I was a little jealous though that she got brought out a bowl of champagne. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I storm, storm in first class. <laughs> <laughs> But that's good because I'm sure you only want the best, the best for your we, beloved pets. Yes. Were the cats jealous because they were under the seat? Right? Oh, the they, cats they were zoned out. They had. I, I made sure that they. <laughs> and again, there are products on the market that you can spray inside their um, portable, you know, kennels, oh. that will keep your pet, your your cat, calm. Calm. Wow. They, when they are in the environment that they haven't been before. It will bring out that meowing, and that meowing, it's not pretty. It is very annoying. You don't want to annoy I imagine on an your, airplane. you know, surrounding guests of that flight, yes? So, uh, yes, we made sure that they stayed very nice and wow. quiet. And these are secrets for, for someone who has never traveled with pets, because sometimes I'm very surprised that um, there are a lot of pets yes. on airplanes. It's incredible that every, everybody, they have a, a backpack, and a pet. <laughs> yeah, like everybody's right, traveling right. like that these days. And the pets are very calm on the airplane. Like the babies, that's a whole different the babies story. Are, well, I, she's got extra spray still from when the cats are there. And I bring it on the plane now. When I see a screaming baby, I just pretend I'm going to the restroom. And shh, shh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we're going to have to cut that part. <laughs> Moving animal here, it's one thing. If you're looking to have your animal come and visit, traveling back and forth, United States has its own set of rules and regulations, mm -hmm. so those definitely need to be checked as well. They don't like animals traveling to United States as much as animals leaving United States. Okay. They are way more lenient to leave than when you're when trying to come back. back. Okay. So CDC, FAA, those uh, websites definitely need to be checked to make sure what you are going to require to bring your animal back to United States if this is just a travel back and forth. Right, it's a lot easier to bring an animal here. Yes, it is around. much yeah. easier to just bring it here and stay here right. than take your animal back to United States. Okay. Very, very good information for anyone who has pets and so many people have pets and are asking questions yes. about that. So yes. thank you for sharing your experience. If you want to get rich in real estate, Download my PDF. We know that your story has a happy ending and it's not even ended yet. But just uh, yeah, yeah, just beginning. But it's helpful for people to hear about what is beautiful about this country, which we always talk about. Talk a little bit just about some of the challenges and the, the cultural adjustments, uh, if any. I know many people go through them, but share some of that. 
Sure, obviously it's a different culture. It's a different country. There's going to be a different culture. You know, getting used to the Dominican lifestyle where everything's a little tranquilo, as we like to say. Tranquilo. 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 Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, coming from a fast-paced life and a fast-paced business, uh, it's been a challenge for me to kind of try to adjust a yes, little bit. to the pace. Uh, because the, the pace. pace is different because yes. you can be used to just running Absolutely. and then all of a sudden it's like... Slow no, you need to down. Put one of the funniest things I find about patience on yourself. Yeah. Yes. One of the funniest things I find about the pace, though, is I think NASA has determined that the amount of time it takes between a green light happening and a Dominican to honk their horn is faster than the speed of light. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're in a hurry to go somewhere. Yes. For sure. Yes. But everything else is very relaxed. I agree with you a thousand percent it is so funny dominican people are the most relaxed and calm people on earth until, until they get behind the wheel yes. yeah. behind the wheel it is like woo. grand theft auto was actually made from here yes. I, I believe it i believe it i totally <laughs> believe it that is something that is to, to get adjusted to and then you know they park and get out the car and it's just like and, and, and going back to a nice slow and steady. Yes, yes, yes. And then different adjustments definitely for the restaurant business too. You know, back home we have things like Cisco and U.S. Foods and they just don't have that here yet. Right. Um, it's still a developing country, but it, it's a challenge sometimes to, to run to the grocery store and get everything you need for a restaurant, if you can imagine, can uh, imagine. after a busy day or something. And, and the grocery stores have interesting differences here too. Uh, trying to buy a case of beer, they can't actually scan the box of beer you have to literally take a beer out and then the cashier has to get a manager yaves uh which is keys uh mm-hmm. and they have to get the person to come over and ring up 24 different bottles oh my uh, goodness so it's just interesting sometimes yes yeah um, some of the differences and i think the world's best jenga players are actually dominican as well they can stack those <laughs> really? shelves with those bottles of beer so you can't get one Be out <laughs> Take it from the top and get some help, (laughs) right? Exactly, yeah. (laughs) Okay. We understand there are differences and challenges culturally with the United States and the Dominican Republic as far as pace. However, you were already in the restaurant business before you transitioned here. Were there some differences or distinctions running a restaurant in the U.S. versus running a restaurant in the DR? Absolutely. There's cultural differences play into the restaurant business here. Um, certainly there's different, you know, different laws that you have to get adjusted to, different tax issues. Uh, you know, for tourists coming here, sometimes uh, understanding that there's an 18% sales tax throws them for a loop a little bit. Uh, yeah. But I always explain it to folks as, at least coming from the United States, we generally pay 28% on a tax, on a, on a receipt from a restaurant because you're paying a 20% tip and an 8% sales tax. It's kind of just reversed over oh, here. So we do the 18% smart. and the 10, which is the same 28. Right. Um, we just kind of reverse it a little bit. And I love the way they do it here. They actually split that tip amongst all the workers. So your waiter's getting some of that. The chef is getting some of that. The dishwasher is getting some of that. The guy cleaning the beach gets some of that. So it kind of... It makes it a little bit more equitable for everyone. Now, that's something that I want to reiterate a little bit about mm-hmm. going out and dining right. in the Dominican Republic is that you will get a bill with 28%. Is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, 18% for the sales tax, which they call it tevis. Right, 18%. And then 10% is the lay, which is the tip split amongst everyone working that day. Okay, so the tip is generally built into the bill. That's correct. And would you recommend tipping more or just leaving it like that? You know, I, I generally, when I go out to restaurants, I'll wind up tipping an extra 10% because I know, you know my standard from the U.S. was 20%. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of what just what we're used to doing. But I think you should just tip amongst, you know, if you had great service, throw throw a couple extra dollars. It really means a lot to these people here. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, some of the resort workers, uh, my understanding is that they might make only $200 a month or so. Right. Um, so they kind of depend on those tips. And, and I do find that people coming from the States, coming from Canada, coming from even even Great Britain, where tipping isn't necessarily part of their social culture, um, they do tip well here and they're taking care of the staff. Yes. Um, at the resorts, at my restaurant, um, all around, the, you know, people are generally, they're coming here on vacation, they're happy. Yes, so. yes. And I agree with you 100%. Generally, when I go to the restaurant, I will add 10%. Mm-hmm. I know that 10% is already included. And I will generally add 10% on the top of that and leave that, even though it's, there's some tip that's already included in the bill. What about business in general? 
You've established a business, a Dominican business yes. here. What would you recommend to folks who are actually looking to do a business, even if it's not a restaurant or anything else, because there are people who may be interested in coming here like you, like me, and being an entrepreneur and running business? Absolutely. Uh, do the research. And, and generally, I would say this is a great place to come and do something that you already are familiar with. You know, if you've been in the restaurant business and you want to open a restaurant, great. If, if you've never been in the restaurant business, I don't recommend doing it necessarily because it can be challenging and there's a lot to learn. I certainly don't think that I would be very uh, adept at being uh, an accountant for somebody because it's just not my forte. I'm, I love being around people and kind of having that opportunity to talk with people, uh, the social aspects of things. And honestly, I, I, to this day, I've been in this business 42 years now. I'm giving away Whoa, my age. Wow, for, 42 years yeah, in business. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> You've but, probably done a little bit of everything then. Uh, I have. I have. Uh, and I've been very blessed to have a, a lot of great mentors and uh, a lot of opportunities to work with some fantastic chefs and fantastic managers. And uh, they've taught me a whole lot. But to this day, I think one of the reasons that I've... I've been lucky to be successful is that I generally get a great feeling when someone comes to my restaurant and has a good experience. It's not a fake smile. It's a, it's, I'm a really happy when they have a great night and they've enjoyed the food and they've enjoyed the service and they tell me about, you know, the bartender was really friendly and they appreciate that. That actually gives me a good feeling inside. I think, I think people can feed off of that too. Yes, yes, I think so too. And I think that that's a very good tip for anybody who is interested in coming to the Dominican Republic or Punta Cana and starting a business. I, I did the same. I was yeah. in real estate and I do get asked that all the time. Were you in real estate before you moved sure. here? Yes, yes, yeah. I was. Uh, so I didn't have that as a challenge to learn the business and learn the culture and learn the laws in the country for doing business because I already had that background, because there is a learning curve, somewhat of a learning curve to understand how business is done, the language, if you're not speaking the language. So there will be inherent challenges anyway. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, I'm still learning today. There's still things I'm finding out. I know. Me so, too. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. All these years. And I've been here going on a lot of years. So there's always something new and something to learn. Not to say that you can't come and do something completely different, but the path of least resistance is to kind of see if your same uh, industry or your same business that you can just do that here versus at home. Yeah, oh. utilize the skill set you have, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mm -hmm. should love the job that you do so you don't end up sabotaging yourself. That's true. That's yeah. a good point. That's a good point. Some people just want to make a change, yeah. and that's okay. But I think that it, it is a little easier because you know how to run a restaurant. I know how to do real estate. Right, <laughs> so, right. Yes. So, you know, less, fewer obstacles, let's say. Imagine waking up in paradise. Forget about those ordinary, all-inclusive resorts. Welcome to Boutique Hotel Las Flores, a secluded oasis in the heart of Punta Cana. Come, let's take a look. On our podcast, we generally have this question box where uh -oh. we have our community to ask a question. So okay. go ahead and pick one of the questions out and I'll ask the question. Oh, I don't even get the look. Okay. You don't nope, even get, you don't the, get look. the look. <laughs> Let me just spring it on you. Okay, ready? Uh, ready. <laughs> okay. Uh, was it difficult leaving friends and making a new social life in Punta Cana? Wow. It, you know, of course it's difficult uh, to, to leave behind your loved ones and your friends back home. You know, we're blessed that uh, we have the, uh, the ability to, uh, it's only a three and a half hour flight, so when we feel like we want to go home and visit, we certainly can. But uh, you know what I found here is that uh, it's, it's not that hard to make friends. There's a big expat community here. Mm -hmm. uh, they seem to be very active. Uh, both my son and I actually are singers, and so we sometimes go out to the karaoke nights in town. And karaoke! Met, yeah, we've met a lot of people uh, through that and actually had those people become guests of our restaurant. So it's kind of nice. almost uh, uh, it's our, it's win -win. Our, a win-win, yeah, marketing for us. Yes, yes, yes so, that's and, great. Yeah, and my son loves doing it too, so. And Sylvia, do you sing karaoke? Uh, I, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> she sings at home. Uh, 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 tell the truth. No, no, no. I used to sing when I was much, much younger. But I, I, yeah, I can't. No, 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 no. So socially, you go. Oh, or... I am very outgoing person. Mm-hmm. Ask anybody. Uh, microphone scares me, uh, <laughs> so I don't sing. But yes, the social life here, expat community, very tight in here. Once you become an expat, once once you are part of the community, everybody is out there to to help you out. Yes. Facebook is a huge, you know, help with that. We've got plenty of expats Facebook uh, pages where you can ask any kind of question and people will actually answer. They will yes. give you something that you're looking for. Being part of that community helps because that's one of your resources here. Yes. And that is really good. And I've seen that grow over the years. When I first moved here, there was nothing Mm, like that 18 years ago. And you are absolutely right. If I'm in a group and I'm in the groups and somebody asks a question, everybody is there to give an answer. Yes. And that is so, so, so helpful. So if you are interested in possibly moving here or whatever, get into the expat groups and see what the conversation oh, is about and meet some people before you even come. So exactly. I, I think that's a, a good tip uh, to answer the question about social life is you can even start it before you arrive. Sure. Yes. And you would know this much better than I would, but I've in just in the two and a half, three years that I've been here have seen nothing but massive construction going on. And, and, and I think the real estate values are just going to skyrocket. I'm sure you, Obviously, you're the expert yeah, of that, but yeah. they just keep growing and they keep growing. growing. And, and even some people say, is it too late? No, just, you know, it'll be too late if you don't do it today and you see what happens tomorrow. So it's it's great to go ahead and make those investments yes. to move here, to do what you've done, to transition, start business. Even the step, day. Yeah, there's no time like the present. No time like the present. <laughs> Lastly, how can people get in contact with you? Sure. For the restaurant, it's uh, www.castaways-restaurant.com. Uh, from there, you can find links to our Instagram and our Facebook as well. Uh, and then our address is 1 Andy Las Vegas Boulevard. Again, we're inside of Playa Palmero, which is in the city of Uvera Alto. So come on out and see us at Castaways. Castaways. Yes. Castaways. We're going we're gonna to be right there with you on the beach. Fantastic. Looking forward to it. So thank you so much, Michael and Sylvia, for being a part of our Punta Cana podcast and sharing your experience with our audience. And be sure to hit that subscribe button and make a comment in the comments about what is your favorite seafood or what you uh, like (laughs) to eat at the restaurants or when you're going to get to Castaways or joining the Expat group so then we can connect with you and we'll see you on a future episode of the Punta Cana podcast. Thank you so much. (laughs) 